I just bought this Ender 3S1. It's an outstanding printer, but it has one glaring flaw. That's the PTFE lined hot end. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to make your own all metal heat break. On top of that, I'll be installing a CHT nozzle and doing some flow rate tests. And I'm not exaggerating when I say this printer is fast as f So let me just loosen this one screw. There's a couple more screws I gotta loosen there. And that comes right out. It looks like there's no PTFE tube leading into this thing, but this base area is pretty wide. So that leads me to believe that there's a PTFE lining inside of there. So I have my fancy Nipex pliers. I always use these things for projects like this because they do a really great job. If we look in here, you can see there's that little PTFE lining in there. This is an aftermarket bimetallic heat break from Slice Engineering. This is the design that I would like to replace it with, but unfortunately, you can see this is just a smaller heat break overall. This is an all metal heat break that was designed for the Biku H2 extruder. The Creality heat break is 5.95 millimeters. The Biku H2 heat break is 5.91 millimeters. So that should be close enough that I can swap these out. I measured a 3.5 millimeter difference in the length of this heat break and the heat break I'm installing. I'm going to go ahead and shave off 3.5 millimeters. To get the best results with a hacksaw, you want to use cutting fluid and you want to use a sharp blade. And if you're doing this right, you should see smoke coming off. I don't want to clog that nozzle with carelessness. So I'm going to need to clean this out and make sure that I've got a flat edge here. Now if I had a lathe, this would be super easy. If you don't have a lathe, you can always put this in a drill and spin it around while you press it against sandpaper. You just want to keep at it until all the sanding marks are concentric circles. So now that's pretty flat and I'm going to switch over to a finer grit of sandpaper. Now it's starting to look really nice. I'm going to finish this off by hitting it with my chamfering tool. And that'll put a nice chamfered edge on that hole so that it's easier to feed filament. If you have pipe cleaner, now would be a great time to use it, but I don't. I'm just going to take some threads from this rope and I'm going to push it through with this tiny Allen wrench. Now I can just clean this out. You should be able to inspect it by holding it up to a light and making sure it's clear. The thermal compound that I'm going to be using is this boron nitride paste from Slice Engineering. It has similar properties to diamond and it allows you to have very high heat transfer in a very heat resistant material. And I'll get it in all of these threads. Screw these together. The boron nitride paste was covering all of those holes earlier, but I smacked it against the ground like this and it cleared those holes. Now I'm going to put this heat break on and I'm going to torque down this nozzle. We'll follow that up with a hot tightening just to make sure that it's on there good. Time for more boron nitride paste. We'll make sure the walls are nice and coated. I'm going to use this cartridge style thermistor and I'll solder this tiny connector to it. So I'm just going to trim these wires and I'll trim these wires. I'm going to be using this Hakko portable soldering iron. It's super convenient for small jobs like this. So this fits right back in here and then I'll just tighten that grub screw and plug these connectors in and we'll have our new hot end. The only issue I can see here is actually this wire is going to be kind of hard to bend and make that little corner there, but we'll make it work. Oh god, my wire broke loose here. I had to put a zip tie on it to get that cable to bend at a tight angle. I should have left the leads a little bit longer on this thing so that it could comfortably bend back and plug back into here. So see when I unplug this, it wants to spring out a little bit, but I'll see if I can get it to permanently bend a little bit. Now when I unplug it, it pretty much stays in the same place. I don't want it to pull itself out when I'm in the middle of a print. Now I'm just going to reattach the hot end. Both of these benches were produced with the same G-code. You can see this one in the front looks a little bit nicer. There's less stringing. So here you can see the stock setup. Here you can see the results with the new hot end. If you look here, you can see where the layer lines start and end. There's a little gap, and that gap isn't as bad on this other print. So again, the one on the left looks just a little bit cleaner than the one on the right. The only real difference there is the nozzle and the heater block. We can see that print quality was slightly improved with this new hot end setup. And with the addition of a CHT nozzle and a copper heater block, we should be able to reach much higher speeds. This is 32 cubic millimeters per second. This is getting weird. It's like curling back up as it's coming out of the nozzle. As we can see by the extrusion test results, this new hot end is much faster. I'd be comfortable printing up to 30 cubic millimeters per second, or roughly double the speed of the stock setup. It can probably reach 45 cubic millimeters per second, but we get this weird side shooting issue at higher flow rates, which would probably ruin single extrusion width features like infill or vase mode prints. 
you might still be able to use these higher flow rates on solid infill layers. So if you're printing a lot of flat stuff, you can realize another huge boost in print speeds. I left links to all the products I used in the video description. The Copperhead and CHT nozzles are compatible with most other printers, so even if you don't have an Ender 3S1, you can still use these upgrades to get an extra boost in print speed and quality. Also, did you notice my new fancy part cooling solution? It's my own design and works very well. I'll be doing a separate video on fan upgrades for the Ender 3S1. If you want early access to the STLs, check out my Patreon. From now on, I'll be posting all of my STL files and parts lists to Patreon as soon as I finish them. If you want to see more 3D printer reviews and upgrade videos, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. I'm about to show you something pretty cool. I can put this board on like this. I can leave this plugged in up here. And boom, you've got a double hot end setup. That is really freaking cool.